Hey everybody, this is Vince Miller. Thank you so much for joining me for some more time right here in God's Word. Our shout out today goes to Robert Colbert from Hickory, North Carolina, who recently purchased some of our beautiful all-in leather journals. Thank you, brother, for supporting our ministry, but I pray those journals will support you and the other men you're going to share them with in your spiritual growth. So this is for you today. Galatians chapter 3, verses 19 through 20 read, Why then the law? It was added because of transgressions, until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made, and it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Now, an intermediary implies more than one, but God is one. So what's Paul doing here in this text? Well, he's asking a rhetorical question, and the question is this, what is the purpose or maybe the function of the law? Now, if we read his question in context, the question more precisely would be, if our works of obedience to the law do not save us, and faith in Jesus' works do save us, well then, what is the function of the law? And by the way, that is a very good question. One he knew the believers in Galatia might have, because you see Paul was skilled at debate. So he understood the next questions that some might have. And I believe growing believers need to ask questions. In fact, it's right for you to ask them, to inquire. I think sometimes too many believers arrive at salvation, usually by an emotional decision, and then just stop. They just stop searching. Now, I know the moment of salvation is significant, but it isn't the end of spiritual living. It's the beginning of it. Sanctification, spiritual growth, and the Spirit await you. There is plenty of corruption in your mind, by the way, that still lives there, inside of your heart and your mind and your soul that God wants to deal with in your life. And these issues should generate lots of really troubling questions, by the way. In Galatians, Paul is dealing with the corrupt beliefs of work-based salvation. The wrong belief that salvation requires adherence to the Old Testament law. Now, if the Galatians see this mistaken belief and turn to salvation by faith alone, it's going to actually increase their faith in God, who has planned their salvation from sin since the beginning of time. And they'll begin to see that thread that we talked about yesterday. So, if you are a believer listening today, Rejoice in your salvation right now. Rejoice in it. But don't stall out and get stagnant. Ask a good question today, and you might find you'll get a good answer that only increases your faith in God's greatness. You know, the answer Paul gave the Galatians in our text today is so razor, razor sharp. The law was given to do this, to divide right from wrong. Not to make you right or wrong. Faith alone saves you. The law merely points out how bad you are and how badly you need God's salvation. Do you see how asking a good question might challenge a flawed belief and increase your faith at the same time? It's incredible. So church, great questions lead to great answers and greater faith in a great God. God, I just really pray today that you will give every believer listening a moment of reflection where they are faced with a good question about you. Provide them with a great answer, Lord, that will drive away their disbelief. Increase the joy of their salvation today in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you guys. Thanks for joining me. I pray this has blessed you. If it has, share it with someone else, and I'll see you right back here again tomorrow.